Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, September 22nd. We are still in Unit 1 for the fall quarter, which is entitled, God is Faithful. God is Faithful. We're in Lesson 4 from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. Our lesson title is... We don't believe you. We don't believe you. Our background, our devotional reading is taken from Psalm chapter, or Psalm 106, verses 1 to 12, and then verse 48. Background scripture taken from Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 through chapter 14, verse 10. And our printed passage is Numbers chapter 13. 13 verse 1 and 2, 17a, and then 25 to 28a, and then chapter 14, verse 1 to 2, and then 5 to 10a. And that sounds like a lot, but it, it, re it really isn't. Uh, the lesson aims from the uh, faith pathway are, number one, evaluate the reasons for the Israelites' refusal to listen to Joshua and Caleb. Number two, long for deeper trust in the promises God has made. And then number three, face the future in confidence of God's guidance and provision. And this uh, lesson has, the outline has three major divisions. The first is walking by sight. That's covered between verses or chapter 13, verses 1 and 2, and then 17a. The second is the danger of nevertheless. And that's covered between verses 25 and 28a in chapter 13. And then the third is rebellion against God's grace. And that's covered between in chapter, four, chapter 14, verse 1 and 2, and then verse 5 through 10a. From the Standard Commentary, our lesson title is Faithful Despite Unfaithfulness. Faithful Despite Unfaithfulness. And very quickly, um, additional aims from the Standard are Number one, relate the events surrounding the sending out of the spies into Canaan, and the Israelites' response. Number two, explain the consequences that could accompany talking, I'm sorry, taking a stand based on faith in the Lord in Moses' day. And then number three, evaluate personal and communal fears that make walking by faith especially challenging and consider ways to address these fears. In our last lesson, which is taken from Genesis chapter 16, uh, we, we recall that the Israelites were just some six weeks out of uh, captivity, out of bondage in Egypt. Uh, and they had murmured uh, several times to that point, and they were murmuring about food, and they had murmured about water. And a lot has happened since uh, that time uh, to the point that we are now in their wilderness journey. Uh, they did camp in the wilderness of Sinai. Uh, they actually went to, to the foot of the Mount Sinai, and God established his covenant uh, with them, and we read about that in uh, Exodus uh, 19. Uh, he gave his Ten Commandments, and of course, you may recall, while Moses was in the Mount Sinai receiving the law, uh, that the children um, did uh, did lose their faith. Uh, they actually. Uh, fell into a period of debauchery. They had uh, Aaron fashion a, a golden calf, which they uh, said was the God that delivered them from Egypt. Uh, and you remember uh, you remember the, the narrative. Uh, also, um, later on, uh, we see that uh, Moses' siblings 
um, Aaron and his sister Miriam were jealous of Moses' position of leadership. And we, we know uh, in Numbers chapter 12, uh, the Lord responded by afflicting Miriam with leprosy. Uh, and she had to be quarantined for a week. And, of course, the children of Israel um, were, uh, they paused their travel while Miriam was quarantined. And and then that kind of brings us to where we are now. They journeyed, their journey resumed, uh, and they reached the wilderness of Paran, uh, and uh, specifically Kadesh Barnea. Kadesh Barnea, and that is where our lesson begins today. They are in the wilderness, and they are um, right at the at the border of where um, uh, the Lord wants them to embark on their quest for the land of Canaan, which He promised to their father. So, uh, we're going to read our lesson text, and then we will have some. Uh, some verse by verse discussion. So our first, the first section of our printed passage, is Numbers comes from Numbers 13, verses 1 to 17, 18, and then 25 to 28. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And skipping down to 17. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get ye up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong or weak few or many, and skipping down to 25. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came into the land whither thou sent us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. In our second section, our second section uh, of uh, the printed passage comes from chapter 14, 14, 1, 2, and then 5 to 10a. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in the wilderness? Skipping down to verse 5. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which passes through, which we passes through, or passed rather through, to search it, is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation bade stone them with stone. And our key verse comes from Numbers 14, is number 14, 8, Numbers 14, 8, and it reads again, If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land 
and give it us, or give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Which floweth with milk and honey. Amen. So let's just go before the throne. Um, Father, we do thank and praise you for another opportunity to study your precious word. And Lord, we pray that you would give us an understanding, Lord, of uh uh, not only the historical narrative, but, Lord, the example uh, that uh, you have provided for us in this narrative, Lord, for our lives, Lord. Uh, teach us, Lord, to trust you, Lord, in everything and for everything, and to know, Lord, you've not brought us this far to leave us, Lord. And your word said that he did spare not his own son, but delivered us him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Help us to trust you again, Lord, for our provision day by day, week by week, year by year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So we're going to jump right in with both feet and discuss this lesson uh, verse by verse. So again, verse uh, 1, this is chapter 13, verse 1, and let's look at 2a as well. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Now, the, the, if you read more of the background, uh, uh, put this, uh, this, these uh, verses in context, uh, you, you will understand that the children... Uh, most likely had uh, inquired or asked Moses to send spies into the land. This was not something that God uh, thought was needed, of course, but God uh, and the Lord, uh, we're not, we don't see it in our text, but evidently Moses brought this before the Lord and the Lord consented to the people sending spies into the land uh, obviously the lord knew what he was going to do uh and he wanted the people to trust him to do it to deliver the land to them uh but uh our human nature uh wants being what it is uh caused them to be more cautious and uh and and we see time after time how they forget the mighty uh, acts the power that god has displayed uh, the miraculous power that God has displayed, and they and they operate in the natural, and so being in the in the natural, they uh, they wanted to send spies into the land to know what they were up against, and so God gives some direction to how that campaign is to be carried out. He says he says that they are to send uh, men uh, into the land uh, that he was giving them he was giving them that's we want to emphasize that verse 2b says of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man every one a ruler among them and from the niv uh, i'll just read that entire verse 2 again it says send some men to explore the land of canaan which i am giving to the israelites from each ancestral tribe, send one of its leaders. The person from each tribe, the man from each tribe that was to be sent, uh, was to be respected among the people. He was to be regarded as a leader and one that they would have confidence in uh, his uh, report. Okay, so this is that this is the purpose for doing that. And then, of course, uh, if you read the background scripture, you read the verses between verse 3 and verse 16, which is not included in our printed passage or in our printed text. And those verses, in those verses, uh, they name the, the 12 men chosen from each tribe among them or uh, from the tribe of Judah, Caleb the son of Jephunneh, and Oshi, the son of Nun. And we know that Moses later uh, calls Oshi, the son of Nun, Jehoshua, Jehoshua, or Joshua. Uh, 
And we know that means the Lord saves, the Lord saves, or uh, he, that is a earlier rendi rendering of uh, Yeshua or Jesus. Actually, Joshua means Yahweh is salvation. Yahweh is salvation. So we pick up at verse 17, and it reads, And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, and said unto them, Get ye up this way southward, and go up into the mountain. Now, there might be a little confusion about the directions that uh, Moses uh, is giving the spies. Uh, and without getting into a lot of discussion about the terrain, uh, we want to understand that uh, their journey did encompass uh, the, the, the depth of the land. They went from the highest point of the land that God uh, intended to give to his children, the children of Israel, to the most southern territory, most southern region. Uh, that they were to possess. Uh, they, they're they situated in uh, Negev, uh, which is in the south. And again, uh, that, we know that, well, that area was allotted to Judah. Uh, but they they actually, and, and, the, and the mountains, uh, Moses is saying to get up into, or really hill country, they're hills. It's a hilly terrain that he's talking about. But suffice it to, to say that they in, encompass or they actually journey through the entire land from top to bottom and covered uh, some 200, I believe, and approximately 240 miles in the 40 days that they were spying out the land. And verse 18 says, And see the land what it is and the people that dwelleth therein whether they be strong or weak few or many now Moses is giving them some simple instructions as to what to look for when they go into the land they want to see uh, how productive the land is or whether uh, it's wilderness uh, or unproductive uh, they want to uh, see the people, evaluate the people, and make an assessment as to whether they are strong, militarily strong, or weak, militarily weak. Whether they're numerous or whether they are few in number. Uh, and again, this is looking from the natural. Uh, obviously, a general uh, would make an assessment of uh, a city uh, or a a country, if you will, uh, that he intended to attack or conquer before entering. So this is looking from the natural. It isn't something that God wanted them to do. Didn't think that they they uh, needed to do this. They simply needed to trust him. But uh, he uh, he wants them to look for these particular things. And then he uh, not included in our lesson text. Uh, Moses did. Uh, conclude his instructions uh, to uh, by by telling them you know after giving them some further instructions uh, uh, he elaborates on basically what he's already instructed them to do he tells them to be of good courage and bring up the fruit of the land and uh uh, and then and, and it was at the time, it was the time of uh, the first ripening of the grapes. That, that's covered in uh, verse 20, which is, again, not in our lesson text. So when they went out, it was the time of the first ripening of the grapes. And Moses instructs them to be of good courage and to bring back some of the fruit of the land. Now then, so if you covered the verses between 24, I'm sorry, 20 and uh 19 rather, and 24, then uh, you know that it talks about their journey. It talks about uh, them actually going into the land and spying it out. And then we pick up our lesson text at verse 25 on their return. And they returned from searching the land 
after 40 days. And actually, during this 40 days, uh, they have covered from Kadesh Barnea, which is where they started, north to Hamath, and that's approximately 250 miles. And that's a, a reasonable uh, distance to cover in 40 days. And, and they remember their own foot. Uh, and uh, we know that 40 uh, in the Bible has significance. Uh, it indicates uh, various periods uh, throughout the Bible, periods of trial. Uh, it indicates, uh, obviously, Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. Moses Life is divided into 40-year periods, uh, as you know, first 40 years in Egypt, second 40 years uh, in the wilderness and uh, on the backside of the desert being tempered by God, and then the next 40 years leading the people, the children of Israel. And, of course, uh, 40 years was a generation at this time. It was a biblical generation. Now, uh, picking up at... Uh, Verse 26, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they, and let me read that in the NIV for just a little further clarity here um, it said they came back to Moses and Aaron and the whole Israelite community at Kadesh in the desert of Paran there they reported to them and to the whole assembly they reported to them being Moses and Aaron and to the whole assembly and showed them the fruit of the land so they're simply coming back, and you can imagine that the people were excited to see them back. They they were waiting anxiously for their arrival to know what what lie ahead uh, for them. And at this time, I, I would I would hope that they were optimistic, uh, and they were uh, uh, believing God that He was going to deliver this land to them. Uh, and uh, of course. Verse 28 says, nevertheless, and actually, let me back up uh, because our lesson doesn't cover, the lesson text doesn't cover a uh, description of the fruit, but they brought back uh, clusters of grapes that were so large they had to be carried on a rod by two men. Uh, they brought back pomegranates, and, uh, and which indicated the fruitfulness, the productiveness of the land, fertileness, if you will of the land. Uh, verse uh, 28, Nevertheless, the people be strong uh, that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak, or Anak there. So, in the Faith Pathway Commentary, one of the divisions, the second division, is the danger of nevertheless. And the commentator says a lot about uh, that uh, when you say nevertheless. Basically, you've kind of negated what you said before, okay? Uh, and it, it's unfortunate uh, that uh, they gave this good report. They did report that the land was flowing with milk and honey as the Lord had described it. But when they said, uh, nevertheless, despite that, in fact, nevertheless can mean uh, in spite of that or notwithstanding or all the same. In other words, this what I've reported to this point is inconsequential compared to what I'm saying now. And so nevertheless, they're saying the cities are fortified. You know, they are walled. They have big strong walls and uh, we know that the first city that they went into Jericho had what from a natural perspective were impenetrable walls and uh, God gave them simple instructions to circle the city seven times and then seven times on the seventh day and then to shout 
and the walls came down. So uh, not impenetrable for God. No, so the walls were, were nothing, uh, no obstacle uh, for God. And then they said, moreover, the children of Anak were there. And, and we read about the Anakin or the children of Anak, which were a people group known to be exceptionally tall. You can read about them in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 9, 2 as well. And uh, if you if you really uh, want to know more about them, uh, you can read uh, Josh. I mean Joshua chapter fifteen, where Caleb actually defeats the remnant of these people. Uh, he told Joshua to give him this mountain or this mountain region, and he went in and uh, and actually defeated these these giants if you will they were referred to as giants they were exceptionally tall people uh, look at uh, Joshua 15 13 15 14 all right um, so our lesson text now jumps over to chapter 14 and we're going to read uh, start at verse 1 1 and 2 and then we'll uh, discuss verses 5 through 10a so verse 1 reads, And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept all night. Now why did they weep? Why did they cry? Because the spies, at this point, the majority of them at least, uh, had given them an evil report. Uh, from a human perspective, uh, they'd given them a report uh, and said that they could not defeat these people. I'm elaborating. If you read the verses in between, uh, they could not defeat these people. They were giants and they were grasshoppers themselves in the eyes of these uh, these people in the land, the occupants of the land. And they were grasshoppers. They looked like grasshoppers in their own eyes compared to them. And so they struck fear in the hearts of the people. And with their negative and fearful and unfaithful report. Uh, now we know that Caleb uh, 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 says just the opposite of what they are saying. He immediately refutes what they're saying and says, "If the Lord delight, if the, uh, 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 or the Lord, he wants to go up immediately and possess the land, uh, and 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 knows that the Lord will." give it to them this is a, a a continuation or covered in the the latter part of chapter 13 uh, if we read uh, 13 30 and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome but the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people and they are stronger than we. And then they give this, they go on to give this evil report. So the people are weeping. The people are fearful. The people have been months in the wilderness. And uh, for what? I mean, to get to a land that is fortified and has strong people and giants and uh, that they're not going to be able to possess as the Lord. And the Lord had promised to give it to them. He didn't say anything about them having to go in and take it, but he said he was going to give it to them. Verse 2, And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And that's a familiar, that's a familiar expression there. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God that we had died in the wilderness? In other words, they're saying it would have been better for us if we had died in Egypt or died in the wilderness rather than come out here and be slaughtered uh, trying to take this, these strong defensed cities uh, and uh, and they go on uh, not in our lesson text today to talk about how they uh, 
uh, verse 3, for example, says, Wherefore and wherefore hath the Lord, or why has the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be prey? Where, <clears throat> were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And so they're concerned about their wives and their children. And uh, we know that, be and God mentions this later on, that because of their fear, for their children and their wives, that he was going to take their children and lead them into the land. But because of their lack of faith, all their carcasses, all of those 21, over 21, were going to die in the wilderness, and he was going to take the children, the next generation, into the land of Canaan, that they were fearful of going into, uh, in part for fear that their children would be taken. Now, um, so we've heard this before we've heard the murmuring and the murmuring is really against God not against Moses and Aaron and uh, of course God does respond and he responds very strongly uh, but it's not in our lesson text today so let's continue uh, verse 5 uh, then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Now, I guess one thing we uh, we do need to mention is verse four, just preceding this verse says, "And they said one to another, Let us make a captain and let us return to Egypt." So they're talking about mutiny. They're talking about doing away with Moses and Aaron, and they know the only way they could make a captain, most likely, or someone to lead them back to Egypt, is to kill Moses and Aaron. So they're talking about mutiny here. And we're not uh, exactly sure why Moses and Aaron fall on their faces, but there are a number of possibilities, you know, uh, maybe uh, reflecting uh, their uh, tremendous emotions uh, concerning this, this issue, the fear of the Lord, that uh, how the Lord is going to respond to this lack of faith, uh, the uh, they're, they're, so they're concerned about his wrath, and of course they may be uh, uh, petitioning, and we know that they do petition the Lord concerning this matter. So there are a number of reasons that for them falling on their faces here before the before the people. I don't think that it was out of fear for their lives, uh, but that may have been part of it as well, because they try to reason with the people uh, as they do this. And, and as they are prostrate, as they've fallen before the Lord, not before the people, but before the congregation, uh, before the Lord in the presence of the congregation, uh, verse 6 says, And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, uh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. They actually tore their clothes, and that was a custom that really... Uh, uh, express the anguish of a person. So these guys uh, express their anguish by tearing their garments before the people. And verse 7 says, And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is exceeding is an exceeding good land. Verse 8, If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us or give it to us a land which floweth with milk and honey. So they put the emphasis back on the land, take it away from the people and the fortified cities or the high walls and put it back on the land that God has promised them and promised their fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And, 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 and they say if the Lord delights in us. You know, um, now we have to remember he's already made a covenant with them back at Mount Sinai. And the people have promised to, to, uh, to follow, to keep his commandments there. Uh, so, and this was a conditional covenant. This was not an unconditional covenant, covenant such as he made with Abraham and later with David. But it was a conditional covenant. Their, their possessing and staying in the land was conditioned on them uh, keeping the law 
uh, that God delivered to them through Moses. So he's saying if we if, if we have the Lord's favor, if the Lord is gracious to us, uh, then he will give us this land. And we and we see that the Lord shows his favor repeatedly uh, toward the children of Israel throughout Exodus. Uh, through his miraculous works and and his his deliverance and his provision for them, and it's it's mind boggling for us to think uh, that uh, these people could so soon after God has shown uh, Himself uh, and continues to uh, uh, a provider for them uh, that 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 they would demonstrate such a lack of faith. But that brings us to where we are today. I mean, God has shown us His provision. Uh, his abundant provision uh, throughout our lives. And sometimes we can worry. We can worry about this or worry about that despite what God has demonstrated to us day after day, week after week, month after month, and year after year. He hasn't brought me this far to leave me. You know, we, we, we should, that should, that should be etched in our minds and we should have the, have, uh, the utmost confidence in God's provision for us no matter what the circumstances. Verse 9, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us, and their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. This is still Joshua and Caleb speaking, and they are telling the people not to rebel or fear, not to rebel against the Lord, or fear the people, because they are no match for God. And this expression, they are bread for us, it really uh, uh, means that the Israelites can easily defeat them. Uh, our, our common expression today is have them for lunch. You know, their size, the size of their, their cities, their strength, and their weaponry, or no defenses against God. They are non-factors, the commentator says here. And so they are really exhorting the people. And I'm, I'm really amazed that despite this exhortation, and, them, and, 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 and they have to be remembering how the Lord has delivered them to this point, that the people continue uh, to fear. And, uh, and as we know, they succumb to uh, the their fears uh, and decide that they do not want to possess the land at that time that God had promised to give them. Now, and this is something that we want to remember. God has has set before us uh, many blessings, and 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 unfortunately, many of those blessings are deferred if they're ever. Uh, uh, acquired, if you will, or claimed because of our lack of fear, because of our lack of faith, I mean our fear rather, or lack of faith to step out and do what God has called us to do to claim those blessings. And we need to search our hearts and we need to make sure that we're being led by God in these things. But God's spirit will uh, will present to us a direction and a path and we want to follow that. We want to be in the place of blessing, and God has set more blessings before us than I think most of us realize, but he wants us to step out on faith and claim those blessings, and so many of our blessings are denied uh, because we have not been faithful to step out and claim them, and and I think this is what we see here. Unfortunately, the consequences for the Israelites meant that they went, turned back into the wilderness, and they were there for another 38 to 39 years. Uh, 40 years in total, wandering in the wilderness until carcasses of all those who were 21 and over, over 21, fell. And then the children of that generation went into the land. And Moses repeats this story about how the spies went out and 10 brought back the evil report in Deuteronomy before the, just before the children of this generation that uh, that was fearful goes in to possess the land. So finally, verse 10a says, but all the congregation bade stone them with stones. Um, And from the KJV, I think that's clear enough, but from the NIV, rather, uh, 
it reads, but the whole assembly talked about stoning them. So they didn't want to hear any more talk about going in to possess the land with God's help or without. They were they were determined that they could not. And in the natural, in their own strength, they could not. But God had not told them that they had to go in in their own strength and defeat these people. He said he was going to deliver it. And that's something we always want to remember. Whatever God has commanded us to do, he has given us the power to do, or he, in fact, will do it for us. So I hope that we have uh, learned by the example, the poor example of the Israelites, uh, how uh, uh, to trust God, uh, not to fear when God has told us to go forward, to go forward uh, with the confidence that God is making every provision for our advance and to claim the blessings that God has provided, has made available to us by faith. So we, we trust that again that uh, we have learned a um, little more than we knew, and we pray that God will bless you and keep you in his care.